Hi everyone, so sometimes back I made a video about the best DSA sheet that you guys should follow and it's been quite some time since that video and a lot of new DSA resources have come out, a lot of new DSA sheets have come out. So I thought of making another video for the best DSA resource or the best DSA sheet available right now and whether even DSA sheets are still worth it for you or not. So we're going to discuss all of these things in today's video. So if you are someone who wants to master DSA to crack fan companies, then make sure that you watch this video till the end because I'll be discussing a lot of good resources and good DSA sheets that you should use or you know what you should do for it. So yeah, let's get into it. All right. So first question that I usually get is that are DSA sheets still good for you or not? Or should you just do you know contest and random solving by your own or should you follow a DSA sheet? So here is my take for it. First of all, you should do topic wise problems for you to understand the pattern because DSA is nothing but a bunch of patterns. It is a bunch of data structures and a bunch of algorithm and you need to recognize that pattern. I'm not saying you need to memorize the problem, but you sort of need to memorize that pattern so that if a new problem comes, you need to know that what pattern will apply there. And a very good way to get that pattern recognition is by doing topic wise problems. So let's say if you're a beginner in DSA or if you're someone who is just, you know, at a beginner or intermediate level at DSA, then DSA sheets are pretty good for you. Okay. Because you need to do topic wise problems. You need to go topic wise. You need to understand the data structure. You need to understand the algorithm and going topic by topic will make sure that it strengthens your understanding of the concept. So if you are a beginner of you or if you are an intermediate, then what is the best DSA sheet for you right now? Let's talk about it. All right. So my personal favorite has been and probably will always be Strivers DSA sheet, the one with the 450 questions. So that is a great DSA sheet. And right now Striver has his own website, take you forward. You can check the sheet out there and it has 450 questions. Similar to this is also Lovebubber's DSA sheet that also has a lot of good problems. So if you're a beginner, you're completely new to DSA or let's say you have a little bit of DSA knowledge, but you haven't fully done DSA then either take Strivers DSA sheet, the 451 or take Love Bubbers sheet that also has around, I think, 400 to 500 problem. Both of these sheets have around 400 to 500 problems and both of these sheets are pretty good if you have a lot of time or if you're just new and you want to go deep into DSA. Now, one point I would like to interject here and this is very important. You know that DSA is important for the technical interviews. In the interviews, you'll come across lead code problems, you'll come across, you know, the DSA sort of problems you already know and you'll need to solve them. But the online coding round of most product based companies are pretty different than the interviews. I've made a separate video about it, but the online coding round and the technical interview are very different. So those DSA sheets will definitely help you in the technical interview, but for the online coding round, for making sure that you clear online coding round, you do need, you do need a little bit of competitive programming. Competitive programming will make sure that you're able to clear the online coding round of companies like Uber, Google, Amazon, D. Shaw, Morgan Stanley, Rippling, and all of these top notch companies, you know, because their online round is sort of like a competitive programming contest. So for this, the best sheets that I'm going to tell you first, again, your Strivers coding round sheet. So there's a sheet by Striver, which focuses on the online coding round and all of the links will be in the description box. So don't need to take any notes. Just go to the description box. And apart from that, one another great sheet that I've gotten a lot of good reviews about because I take a lot of podcasts, right? And a lot of people have mentioned many good things about this other sheet that has recently come up. And this is the CP31 sheet by Priyansh Agrawal, basically. So Priyansh has its own, has his own website, TLE Eliminators. And the CP31 sheet has helped a lot of people, you know, in getting that edge in problem solving. So these two sheets are what you need or you know these are two sheets that you can practice for getting through the online coding round of the top of the top companies right so the entire dsa you have those two sheets that i mentioned and then for the online coding round you have these two sheets now what about if you are an experienced person or let's say you are someone who has already gone through dsa you're out of college you're no longer a fresher you're applying for a switch you've already done dsa so what do you need to do do you still need a sheet so I'll say it totally depends on you. You can do two things. Either you can pick some sheets that are good for revision that I'm going to tell you, or you can just do random problems. So lead code has a randomizer button. You can go 
uh, do random problems or you can even you know go to problem of the day and problem of the day are extremely well like any anywhere you are whether you're a fresher or experienced person always do problem of the day it is extremely amazing so if you're an experienced person or if you're already good with dsa and you need to brush back your concepts then this is what you should do you can use neat codes sheet neat code has a sheet of 150 and 75 problems they are extremely well apart from that you have striver 75 blind which is again extremely well for revision and you even have lead code in the section of lead code you have some problems those are also good but my suggestion to you will be at this point when you have already done enough dsa and you only want to revise or brush up the previous concepts don't do a sheet just go to lead code and start doing contest religiously okay make sure that you give every contest and make sure that you know you try you are able to solve at least the first two and three problems as long as you're able to solve the first two and three problems that should be good enough but for revision these two sheets you can follow easily all right so my final advice to you and i always give this advice to all of my students right who say yeah i'm doing this sheet i'm doing that sheet I always say do not be fully dependent on the sheet because when you're solving the sheet you know what the topic is right for example if you're in striver sheet and you're solving stack problems so you obviously know it is a stack problem so in your mind you know ki i'm going to apply stack so that is good for pattern recognition but if you just keep on doing that then it will not help you in building the intuition and you need intuition for solving new problems so do a sheet but along with the sheet make sure that you always give contest and make sure that you always practice on your own apart from this do not just be fully dependent on the sheet another part is revision make sure that you keep revising the concepts and make sure that you create a sheet of your own this is again a very important thing right and this is what i also do and this is what i have seen a lot of you know a good people do a lot of people who are good at problem solving do and this is creating a sheet of your own so what i mean by that is create a google doc or a google sheet or a notion and whenever you come across a problem that you're not able to solve just put it in that sheet and just put a column where it says why were you not able to solve it and then write a one liner okay, this is why i was not able to solve it this was the solution and when you're revising go back to that problem and just you don't need to code it again just try to think whether you are now you're able to come up with the solution or not okay revision is extremely important for dsa so in a nutshell yes definitely you should use sheets you should do topic wise to you know get accustomed with the pattern along with that you should give contest for revision you should again give contest and you can solve random problems and you can you know do problem of the day and that should be it the more you practice the better your mind will get and make sure that you don't get too stuck up on easy problems make sure that you do more of medium and hard problem right that is where the actual learning happens so yeah that's pretty much it these are the best dsa sheets and the best resources that i have been able to find and i have used these myself right so yeah all of them will be in the description box i hope you like the video and i'll be making a lot of more videos about mastering dsa so make sure if you haven't already do subscribe because i'm going to make sure that you master dsa to a to such an extent that any company's technical interview or any company's coding round will seem like a cakewalk for you so join me on this journey and make sure that you hit the subscribe button and yeah leave a comment if you want and that's all thanks for watching